Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Yeah, I watch Papa's mama. Mm -hmm. Where I watch? Papa. Greetings, greetings, viewers and subscribers. Watch this video, and then I'm gonna tell you what took place. Watch this. Michelle, you can't ball, so. You can have a nice water. You can't see a ball. 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 You can't see a that is good. 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 So that fire, it took place Saturday night, September 21, about minutes to 9 o'clock. It took place at Redgate in the parish of Westmoreland. What we are learning is that a lady named Mrs. Hughes, she's a 72-year-old pensioner. She was at home in her seven apartment board and concrete house when she lit a mosquito destroyer. It is suspected that something like a curtain might have caught that mosquito destroyer causing a fire. Fire was observed coming from the house and family members and neighbors. They assisted in trying to put out the blaze but to no avail. The fire, it quickly spread and the entire house and all its contents were completely destroyed by fire. A unit from the Savannah Lamar Fire Department responded, but they were only able to do cooling down operations. We are told that damage is estimated at over 20 million Jamaican dollars. Sad indeed. This is incident. It took place at Mile End in the Ocherias Police Area in the parish of Sentan. We are told that on Saturday morning, September 21, about 9 o'clock, a female hotel worker in her mid-30s, she left her house and went on the road. When she returned home about minutes to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, she realized that her house was broken into. Entry was gained through a window to her bedroom. The house was ransacked and the hoodlum or hoodlums then stole about 200,000 Jamaican dollars in cash. They then made good their escape through a back door. Just like that. In this next report, on Saturday, September 21, the Hanover police, they held a thief in Quoked that they have been searching for, for months. He is known as Yellow but his current name is Jason Harvey. He is living at Bamboo Drive in the Hopewell area of Hanover. When Yellow was found by the police, he was found with coke and a coke pipe and he was charged for that. But the police, they have been searching for Yellow from March this year. On Wednesday night, March 13, about 8 o'clock, 
CCTV camera captured yellow breaking into the Kaikam Wholesale and Supermarket at Bamboo Drive in Hopewell. Yellow, he forced open my window to the storeroom and used a piece of pipe to thief out some grocery items valued at over 60,000 Jamaican dollars. On Friday night, July 19, Yellow, he returned to the supermarket and wholesale and he was again seen on CCTV camera. This time, he forced open my grill and pry open my door to the building and entered. Yellow, he again thief a quantity of grocery items valued at over 45,000 Jamaican dollars. Like I said, Yellow, he was picked up by the police on Saturday after he was spotted in the Bamboo Drive area. In addition to the coke charge, Yellow, he was charged for two counts of shot breaking and larceny. So, he'll be facing a judge shortly and still in an over. A hoodlum strike at the GV gas station in Lucy again. The latest incident, it took place Saturday night, September 21, almost 9 o'clock. It took place at the GV gas station along Seaview Drive in Lucy. We are told that two pump attendants, they were on the job when they were approached by a hoodlum who was armed with a gun. The hoodlum, he took down the females and proceeded to rob them of cash amounting to about 100,000 Jamaican dollars. The hoodlum, he then made good his escape. Just like that. Now, in yesterday's video, I showed you that video of Patrick. I'm now finding out that his surname is Smith. Patrick is from Brayton in Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine. Like I told you yesterday, Patrick, he was on a JUTC bus Thursday night and because of how he was acting, the bus driver, he stopped the bus in front of the Clifton community along the Bernard Lodge main road and he instructed Patrick to come off the bus. Patrick came off and he was on the road. Persons came out, circled Patrick and started asking him questions. We are told that at times, Patrick, he would go through depression and he had mental breakdowns. As a result, Patrick, he would be non-responsive when he was being spoken to. The persons who surrounded Patrick, they had no idea about his history. Them see it as Patrick being disrespectful to them. So, they threw tires and wood on Patrick and set him on fire, burning him alive. We are finding out that Patrick, he was a good Christian virgin at the Greater Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Patrick, he was an active participant in church activities. Here is Patrick about eight months ago reading Bible lessons in the church. Watch this. I'll be reading two scriptures, Revelation 19 and verse 10. And I will be reading 2 Peter 1 and ver from verse 18 to verse 19. And it's read Revelation 19 verse 10 reads, I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, don't do it. I am I am a servant together with you and with your fellow believers, all those who hold to the truth that Jesus revealed and worship God. For the truth that Jesus revealed is that inspires the prophets. Here and I will read Revelation. I will read first, Second Peter two, verse one. Second Peter two, verse one, from verse eighteen to verse nineteen, and it's read. We ourselves heard the voice coming from heaven. Then we were with him 
and the holy mountains. So we are even more confident of the message proclaimed by the prophet. You will do well to pay attention to it because it is like a lamp shining in the dark place until the day dawn and the light of the morning star shine in your heart. Thank you. This is a reading of God's word. Now, I am hoping that all of you who participated in the killing of Patrick be made to face justice one way or another. I am hoping that the pain that Patrick felt you are made to feel it by 10 times. I am hoping that you be haunted for the rest of your life. Do you think killing Patrick make any of you a bad man? No, it does not. You are a coward. You are evil. You are a dirty drunk crow. And I say that without any apology. Condolences to the family and friends of Patrick Smith. He did not deserve what these junkros did to him. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed... Hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all. So that whenever we drop a new video, you'll be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, I carried a report on Christmas Eve last year. It was about an incident that took place the previous night. Saturday, December 23, about 7.30. It took place at Industry Cove in the Green Island Police area in the parish of Hanover. I told you that that guy on your screen, his name is Romain Kelly, but he was popularly known as Boto. Boto was 26 years old. Boto, he was at his home sitting on his veranda with other close family members. Also on the veranda was a close male friend known as Kimani. Kimani is in his mid-twenties. We are told that while they were on the veranda, a hoodlum appeared with a gun in his hand. That hoodlum was alleged to be that guy on your screen. His name is Tawian Gunnins, but he's popularly known as Tuffy. Tuffy is 24 years old and he has addresses at Grange and Rock Spring in Hanover. It is alleged that Tuffy he opened gunfire at Boto. The persons on the veranda, they ran off in different directions. Tuffy, he then made good his escape on foot in the area. It was then realized that Boto and Kimani, they were shot. Boto, he received gunshot wounds to his upper body and Kimani, he received gunshot wounds to his left shoulder. Both of them, they were rushed by residents to the Noel Holmes Hospital, where Boto, he was pronounced D-E-A-D -E on arrival, and Kimani, he was treated and admitted. Now, remember I told you that Tuffy, he gave himself up to the police last week, Monday, September 16, and he was charged after he was allegedly involved in a shootout with the police earlier this year on Tuesday afternoon, April 2, about 1 o'clock. That incident took place at the Half Moon Beach in Hanover. Tuffy, he was also charged for the shooting death of that guy on your screen. His name is CJ Hall. CJ was 21 years old and he lived at Green River in the South Spring area of Hanover. CJ, he was shot and killed on the night of Tuesday, October 24, last year at minutes to 10 o'clock at Lower Rock Spring in the Green Island Police Area. Tuffy, who was once on the Hanover Police Most Wanted list, 
He has now been charged for the killing of Romain Kelly, also known as Butu. And we are told that Tuffy, he will be slapped with other murder charges. As soon as that is done, I will inform you. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Criminals, they 